All right, guys, let's finally finish off this Omen franchise with the Omen remake. Now, I have reviewed the first o four Omen films, and rewatching them was an interesting thing because the Omen franchise is one that I don't really watch much, so I did like a refresher before I reviewed these, and I usually always do that with movies. I always watch them before I review them just to be f completely fresh with the reviews. But Omen, the Omen remake, before I talk about it, I'm going to give the spotlight to Esley from Entertainment Fanatic Reviews. And we collabed on this one because we talked about the Omen franchise and he's only seen this one and he wanted to collab and I'm glad that we did. So I'm going to give Esley the spotlight. So take it away, Esley. Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Esley Greer and I want to thank Corey from CDR for letting me be a part of this Omen remake review. Yeah, I'm just going to jump straight into my negatives because that's how I always do it. So, first thing I want to bring up is this film, it came out in 2006, so of course you have that early 2000s jump scares and some choppy editing as well. And there's a scene where they're at the zoo and the gorilla is coming after Damien and his mom and she just stands there. I'm like, you need to run. Like, that's not very motherly of you, you know, just to stand there, you know? Also, there's some CGI in here. Some of the deaths look a little bit cheesy at first. You know, there's some CGI blood and stuff. And for me, which this is mixed, like, I don't mind it. This thing doesn't, this doesn't bring me out of the film too much. But the ending, like, it is very twisted. But I would have loved to have seen Damien die because, I don't know, I hate kids. So, kill a kid on the screen. I don't, I don't mind. Oh, and also, it's a shot-by-shot -shot remake. But it is... A lot better than the Psycho remake, I've heard. I haven't seen that one, and I don't really want to. Um, so for my positives, the acting is good. It's nothing special. You know, it's nothing outstanding, uh, to, to say the least. Um, the death of the priest looks more haunting in this one than it did in the original. I do like the score in this film as well. You really do feel for Robert when he finds out about his son. That's just a really heartbreaking moment. And the photographer's death always got to me as a kid. And it is a little heartbreaking at the end as well. I mean, this film does make you feel a little bit. Um, I don't think it deserves the hate it gets, but it's not, it, this film is nothing special, just, you know, to say the least. Um, but I do enjoy it a bit more than most people do. So with that said, I will give The Omen a 7 out of 10. Thank you so much, Corey, for letting me be a part of this. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. All right, Esley, thank you so much. Um... Now, the Omen franchise, to me, like, watching the first three, I really like, and then Omen 4, I don't I don't hate as much as everybody else, and I think it's bad, but I don't hate it as much as everyone else. And then we get to this remake, which is, to me, a perfect example of making remaking a movie but making it worse because of its time period. Like... If you look at the original, like, in terms of effects and in terms of acting, this that's way better than this one, but I'll get into that. Um, this one, like Omen 4, is so pointless with a few little additions that I think are fine in this remake, but this movie, again, is utterly pointless, and I really was incredibly bored watching this because the original is just done in every way better than this remake. This remake is just re just really, really lame. I didn't, like, I didn't mind, like, the, the acting performances in this, in this movie are not bad, but they're not memorable. Like, it's weird because we've got Leah Shriver, we've got Julia Stiles, we've got David Doulis, we've got Mia Farrow. The only actor actor in this movie I really did enjoy was Mia Farrow. She was a little spotlight in this forgettable movie because Mia Farrow I thought did a great job as Mrs. Baylock. She was actually really 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 creepy and scary and I did like her performance. And again, you've got good actors like Leah Shriver and Julia Stiles and David Thewlis and they're all forgettable in this movie because this movie doesn't give them any leeway to do anything at all. They're just there. Like their performances are just performances that are forgettable. They're not great in this movie and I've seen them in great stuff and it's unfortunate because this this movie probably just kept them at a threshold where like they couldn't change anything um so it's like I didn't mind them but they were just boring as the Thorn parents like uh Julia Stiles and Liev Schreiber um and that sounds like a good 
like a good casting. Like it, it is a good casting, but they're just not anything memorable in the movie, unfortunately. Um, again, Mia Farrow, I really did enjoy though. She was a really good standout, and she's the only thing I actually enjoyed for the most part of the, this movie. Um, and I'll give props to the people who, the casting people who casted da- young Damien, like the kid who played Damien in, in this movie is actually really creepy, and he actually is effective. But I could say the same thing about Omen 4, which is, again, another forgettable Omen movie, but the girl is creepy in that, too. But the, And the kid's creepy in this, but it, it's like, it doesn't matter because the rest of the movie around him is just kind of bland and boring. Um, he is very well casted, the kid who played Damien, but, and I do like his creepy looks. He does look like he's a literal son of Satan. Um... And speaking of earlier, whenever I was talking about how the original was everything better than this, in terms of acting and in terms of effects, this one, whenever there are kills that are almost shot for shot, they're done way worse because this came out in 2006, where CG was, depending on what company you had, depending on what kind of budget you had, CG could look fine or CG could look bad. In this one, the CG doesn't look that good. And the practical effects blow the blow this movie's effects out of the water. The kills that are copied from the original are done incredibly way better in the original. And in this one, they're really forgettable. Like whenever David Doulis's character, the investigator photographer guy, whenever he gets beheaded, like he like the guy does in the original, it's stupid CG that looks bad. In the original, you see a prop head like fly off into the air, and it actually is effective. In this one, it's just forgettable, and it's a shame. These practical effects aren't that great, so it makes it even worse on rewatching it, unfortunately, because I really, really wanted to find stuff to like about this one, and I found a couple, but really, it's not much. Um, and also, this one does what 2000s horror movies do with dream sequences, where Julia Stiles, like... Mrs. Thorne, she starts having nightmares about Damien, and they're really bizarre, flash-cut dream, like, nightmares, where, like, she keeps imagining creepy things with Damien, so it's like, ooh, she might know that, like, in this version, she's gonna get killed, but it doesn't add anything, and they're really stupid and flash-cut, like, nightmare sequences. I think that they're not very well done. Um, and also... This thing does the Final Destination 3 thing where you've got photos of these people who are killed and then they see, like, in the photo, something that will imply that's how they die. Um, like, for example, whenever uh, Pete Postawite, or, whatever, or however you pronounce his name, the, the priest guy who gets, like, the spear into him, in the photograph it shows, like, a line, like a spear, like, into him. Like, it's just a line of, like, light. And, like, that's cool, but, like, it's just kind of copying off of Final Destination 3, which came out the same year, funny enough. But, and that's not a bad addition. Like, that's okay, but it's just, I've, I like Final Destination 3 more than this, so. Um, so I thought that was interesting that they added that, too. But, again, everything else about the movie is just almost shot for shot and almost the same kind of thing, but just done worse. Like, it's not... Or done forgettably, I guess I could say. Because, again, you've got great actors who are in this movie who are just not... They don't have anything to work with. The CG effects make it way more dated than the original, where the effects in the original are great. And it just begins and ends the same way. There's no different outcome for anything in the movie. Um, besides little additions, like I said, with the photographs. but it Or the dream sequences. But it doesn't do anything that makes this at all memorable to me. And I don't... Like, I really didn't like this on rewatch much at all. Like, it's just completely and utterly average. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's so boring and average and dull that it's just one of my least favorite remakes. It's just so bland. There's nothing to it. So that's all I could really say about the Omen remake. There's nothing to it. It's just bland and boring. So... I'm going to end it here. That's my review on the Omen remake. Um, and if you like this, check out my links down below. I have a Horror Enthusiast 101 uh, Facebook group. That's the name of it. And we do we just have a lot of 
a lot of people on Facebook uh, conver converse about movies or horror. And I've got a Patreon, Letterbox, Twitter, they're all down below. Um, and next week, I will do a ranking video of all five of the Omen movies, which you're gonna guess, you're probably gonna guess where I'd put the, each one, but I'll still do a ranking. Um, so next week, check out that ranking, and thank you guys so much for watching.